Now let's talk about what the Gulf of Mexico really is. The Gulf of Mexico is the ninth largest ocean basin in the world, covering almost 600,000 square miles. This is twice the size of Texas. At its deepest point, the bottom is 2.7 miles underwater, but most of the Gulf is much shallower. About 60% of the Gulf is less than 700 feet deep. And the Gulf is a very accessible body of water. It's surrounded to the north, east, and west by five U.S. states. That would be Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and of course, Texas. And it's surrounded by six Mexican states to the west and south. And that would be Tamaulipas, Veracruz, Tabasco, Campeche, Yucatan, and Quintana Roo, and then by the island of Cuba to the southeast. Watersheds covering more than 60% of the United States drain into the Gulf, including 33 major river basins and 207 estuaries. About half of Mexico and one third of Cuba drains into it also. Because the Gulf is surrounded by North and Central America, it's often called America's Sea. Rivers carry the runoff and other waters from Texas's watersheds to our estuaries. Because of this, estuaries tell us a lot about how well we are protecting our water resources. Every day, you and I affect the health of the Gulf ecosystem by cooking, cleaning, watering the lawn, flushing, and even driving the car. These things can all cause water pollution if done without regard to the impact on the environment. When multiplied by what the millions of us do who live in the river basins that empty into the Gulf, it's easy to understand that how we treat our watersheds affects the health of our Gulf ecosystems. The Gulf is also one of the most productive waters in the world for aquatic organisms. It provides habitat for many of our most important seafoods. The Gulf the Gulf's productive in other ways too. The Gulf holds one of the world's largest reserves of oil and gas. And that's led to an extensive petroleum industry in the Gulf. The Gulf's combination of ecosystem productivity, industrial importance, and accessibility has made it one of the most important waters to people on Earth, as well as one of the most threatened by human actions and neglect. The Gulf is shaped like a giant wide brimmed bowl filled with salt water. It's shallow around the edges, but deep in the middle. Starting from the coastline and moving out into the Gulf, the edge is full of wetlands, estuaries, and bays opening out to wide and shallow shelves that gradually slope into deep water. The floor of the Gulf is mostly a vast expanse of soft mud. The freshwaters that flow into the Gulf greatly affect the health and productivity of the aquatic life there. It is, in fact, the ultimate downstream aquatic habitat for our Texas-based ecosystems. One of the most important influences on Gulf ecosystems is the Mississippi River. And this accounts for nearly 90% of all freshwater inflow into the Gulf of Mexico. The watershed for the Mississippi River is over six times larger than Texas. It includes 31 states and two Canadian provinces. Like an enormous water hose, the Mississippi River pours fresh water into the Gulf. This natural flow from the Mississippi River has always influenced productivity in the Gulf. Freshwater inflow present, provides nutrients that are carried by currents throughout the Gulf, and these nutrients promote growth of phytoplankton. These are primary producers that form the base of an extensive food chain, including zooplankton, macroinvertebrates, fish, whales, sea turtles, seabirds, and many other forms of marine life. Human activities have added wastes, pollutants, fertilizers, 
and extra sediments to the flow of the Mississippi River. As long as the Gulf remains healthy and it, it can absorb the impact of some level of nutrients and pollution, today as much as 160 million tons of sediment may flow into the Gulf each year. Increased amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers from agriculture in the Mississippi River's watershed have caused over-enrichment and direct pollution of Gulf waters. These extra nutrients have upset the natural balance of aquatic production in Gulf waters adjacent to Louisiana and Texas. The nutrients have created a rapid, massive growth of phytoplankton at the water surface in the summer. This results in a biomass of primary producers far beyond what would occur naturally. This we call an algae bloom. The increase in phytoplankton then affects the Gulf food chain, increasing food for zooplankton and other aquatic life. The amount of phytoplankton produced in such a short period of time is well beyond the capacity of primary consumers to graze it down to a balanced level. Phytoplankton have a relatively short lifespan. So much of the phytoplankton dies before it can be consumed. When phytoplankton organisms die, they sink down to the ocean floor where decomposers, such as bacteria, break them down. At the time of year this usually happens, the water column is stratified. And that, that means that temperature and salinity differences between the surface and bottom water layers prevent those layers from mixing. This isolates bottom waters from being resupplied with oxygen from the surface. The plankton that is sunk to the bottom is decomposed by bacteria that large amounts of dissolved oxygen are consumed by the bacteria during this process. The dissolved oxygen is quickly depleted. The result is creation of what's called a hypoxic zone. This is sometimes also called a dead zone. This is an area of very low to no dissolved oxygen. Organisms capable of swimming away, such as fish and shrimp may leave the area. The life that lives in or on the bottom has nowhere else to go. Many species can experience stress or die as a result of this low dissolved oxygen. Hypoxia adversely affects production of seafood and other aquatic life as food webs are disrupted and organisms at all trophic levels are harmed. The zone of low oxygen expands from the mouth of the river and into the Gulf along the coasts of Louisiana and Texas each summer. Hypoxic zones occur elsewhere in the world's oceans, but the one in the Gulf is now the second largest on Earth, sometimes extending all the way from Texas to Florida. Hypoxia can last for several months until the water layers mix again. Now this can happen due to storms or when the surface water cools in the fall and winter. 